Hi guys, I'm Zina, also known as Boreal, and welcome or welcome back on my channel if you are new. I love talking about things that interest me, and that is why I also am doing my bachelor's of art on analyzing literature with modern world. But we are not here to talk about my love for literature and how I may be associated a Shakespearean character's death with escapism and world. No, I would love to, but not today. We are here to talk about Sims. Yeah, I know the shift and shifting is shifting, but um, keep the peace, boy. So, I've been playing Sims since Sims 2, and I know uh, kinda everything that could happen in the Sims lore, the unhingedness of Sims 1, the creepiness of Sims 2, eeriness of Sims 3, and Sims 4, which happens to be the main subject of today's video. Disclaimer before anything else, I love The Sims, it's one of my favorite franchises alongside Assassin's Creed and it's just amazing, even Sims 4, Sims 4 is actually an amazing game despite what everyone else is saying. It has a charm to its own and has a lot of diversity that in the older games we just didn't have. For example, a lot of things that came in Sims 4 base game, even if with its patches like in 2020, you could only do with modes in Sims 3 for example, and all of these nooks and crannies basically. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, I want to see that a game can be both amazing and flawed in its own way, because Games are made by humans and we are not machines, even if someone wants to replace us and start a cyberpunkish thing like in Cyberpunk 2077, but not today. You are not going to do that today. Anyway, um, this is the entire Sims 4 timeline where basically it's things from 2012, from its making to 2013, to its disastrous launch to 10 years later, all of the content that it gave us and bugs and glitches and such, I may be a fan of Sims 4, but we have to talk about those. Also, some of the info, especially pre-Sims 4 release, it's actually taken from Plumbella's video about Project Olympus and its history and how that project ruined Sims 4 and I'm going to leave it in the description because it's a great and amazing video, it has a good research and everyone should just watch Plumbella and I just don't want to take her information from her mouth, so just a disclaimer. Okay, now with everything really out of the way, this is the total timeline of The Sims 4. So, the year is 2013-2014. Sims 3 Island Paradise University Live and Into the Future are up there. Sims 3 is in the prime, while EA and Maxis are also working on their second IP, SimCity. Basically, if you woke up today and don't know on what planet you are, SimCity is a game similar with Sims, but instead of creating life at a micro level and controlling the people you make, you control a whole city. Anyway, everyone was waiting for the new SimCity game to appear in 2013 because they've been teasing it for a lot of times and everyone was patiently waiting, only to be a disaster. Why? Because it was made to be an online game, while the other SimCity games were offline and by doing this change, by being able to play it online, to have online servers which apparently weren't even stable and the game just had a lot of bugs, it just ruined the whole franchise and in that year EA lost a lot of profits. To say sorry basically they ended an expansion, they added an expansion to the game but it was just wasn't enough I mean yeah you just don't do that. And they couldn't even change it back because this game was created, it was coded to be on online servers. So basically Request cut in patch SimCity. Now, why am I adding SimCity to this whole debacle? Why am I saying this? Because people now were afraid Sims 4 will be kind of the same. It will go on the same route. And also, if you didn't know, the previous games had a lifespan of 5 to 4 years. And Sims 3 was nearing that period and everyone was scared to see how Sims 4 and how it will look like. That's when, at some point in 2013, one of the developers that were working on Sims 4, or Sims 3 should I say, not Sims 4, but we will learn that 
he worked on Sims 4 as well, at that time did like an MAA, also known as Ask Me Anything for those that don't know the abbreviations, where he accidentally shot some project from Project Olympus. And what is Project Olympus, you may ask? Sims 4. And it looked a lot like a mobile game and went on the same route as SimCity from 2013. And since they were scared of that and what could happen, they scratched the idea but reused a lot of the assets from Project Olympus. Originally they said it's not Sims 4, but if we take it like that, Sims 3 when it was in early development, it was also known as Project Raven and now we presume what it is about Sims 3, it's called Project Rene. So it's safe to say Project Olympus was Sims 4. And then from like an entire year from 2013 up until 2014, Sims team was silent on the production of Sims 4 or should I say Project Olympus. Sims 3 continued its last cycle and finished at the end of 2013 with its last expansion, expansion pack into the future. Fast forward to the summer of 2014, we get a series of trailers from what they will be known as Sims 4 and it's revealed is going to be one of the next big things, like it was advertised as a big thing where the Sims were smarter, like they had two trailers based on this new emotion system and they were more figurative and what's not. They also showed some trailers with the woohoo meta which unfortunately didn't make the cut in the original game, but there are actually rumors it might come uh, in this roadmap. We will arrive later at the roadmaps. At first glance, everyone seems excited for Sims 4. Not so much about the graphics, but people were like, okay, it's still an early development, that can change. As to gameplay trailers, I don't really remember to be an actual gameplay footage of the gameplay with what should have been a dead giveaway, but... It was 2014, the internet was obsessed with Five Nights at Freddy's just, just came out, the Fault in Our Stars movie, 1989 by Taylor Swift becomes one of the pop bibles of our generation, you got the point. People seemed interested enough in that new generation of scenes and what it will bring and that was apparently just enough. And then a catastrophe happened. So, on 2nd of September 2014, Sims 4 as intended released. Everyone was happy, they logged into their Origin accounts, when Origin was still alive, buy their Sims 4 copies, enter the game, only to realize it's half-baked. Yeah, when you enter in Sims 4 at its launch from the get-go, you realize a lot of the things they promised missed. Like people were waiting on open worlds like in Sims 3, but instead we got like two blank worlds, which was also known to be Willow Creek and Oasis Spring. Even if the Sims were smarter in theory, everything seemed so bland. For example, there were no ghosts and no pools at lunch, no toddlers, or newborns or basically they kind of existent but they were tied to their creeps which they still are but we will arrive there later there was basically little to no personality whatsoever in this game everything seems so blank everyone and their bomb wanted a refund ea was in shambles that in fact two times people were freaked because this looked a lot like the scandal they had with SimCity, uh, and uh, project olympus was supposed to be multiplayer but scratch it last minute and latch it even if it wasn't ready just because they already talked about and people wanted to know more and more and even even more. So they had to compromise if they wanted for Sims 4 uh, to still bring them money and to not kill the franchise and basically fans to not come after them and burn their studios. And so they started a long process of remaking Sims 4 alongside people. It will receive updates constantly but also expansion packs, stuff packs and game packs, a new type of pack that was added in Sims 4 specifically where you'd receive less than expansion pack but more than a stuff pack so it was something in between and from there our like timeline starts the first update Sims 4 ever received were the ghost update and pool update which came in the fall of 2014 november and 
October to be exact. Then it received a careers update on the 16th of December 2014. Then on the same day, Sims 4 receives its first pack which comes in the form of a free pack which was called the holiday celebration. Like you know how in Sims 2 we had something similar? Well, this was called the holiday celebration and uh, we didn't have season is yet like it was the start of sims 4 and you know to just celebrate christmas they decided to release this pack that's it then in 2015 we got our first pack ever for sims 4 a game pack outdoor retreat which opened a new world granite falls which was and it still is a vacation world it teams around camping and it brings us our vacation feature when you can call and make a reservation for a few days to go to vacation then we got a genealogy update i guess a family tree update alongside the inclusion of mac gameplay since in 2015 it started for mac users to play games more and more than in previous years and also sims 4 was a game which was only for windows up to that point then in march we got basement update where you basically could make basements that's it then we got our first expansion pack for Sims 4, Get to Work, which opened the open jobs where you went with your sim on the site to work and you had goals you could complete for them. For that period, this was a big deal. And we also got retail update with this pack where you could basically own a business and it also came with Magnolia Promenade, which was supposed to be an industrial world, which is still one of the smallest world in the Sims 4 as of right now. It only has one neighborhood and that's pretty much it yeah you heard that right four lots i know they were experimenting like even they said it that they were experimenting with worlds and world building but really for like come on it's an expansion pack and then we got our first stuff pack luxury stuff packs that brought us only six items in total and the 11 overall with cast i believe um like they were very still and for that you had to pay like seven dollars ah uh, fun times in the june of the same year we got a new empty world new crest which was basically a saying of we're sorry we cut off open worlds have an empty world where you could put everything you want and still to this day this is the only empty world we got but at least it's a big world and at least we appreciate that i guess still in june we got the second stuff pack for sims 4 perfect patio which centered around jacuzzi and what so not then in july we got half walls update because apparently you couldn't make half walls tomorrow <laughs> and then still in july we got spa the game pack which was a game pack centered around spas it even came with a spa lot type and a lot of spa items it got a refresh in 2022 i believe and that's it nothing really interesting after that still in 2015 we got a dishwasher update where we got dishwashers uh, in the base game and another stuff pack called cool kitchen where the premise was around kitchen counters stoves and what's so not and an ice cream maker which was also the selling point of this pack on 2nd of september 2015 sims 4 made one year since its release and it had still such a long way to become what its predecessors were so in september we got another pack spooky stuff which was centered around spooky stuffs and costumes which this was before seasons obviously then in 2015 we got one of the most underrated packs ever get together it brought us a club system which still to this day people use it for different usage but where it shines it's the world if magnolia promenade had four lots and people were mad get together comes with winterberg which is supposed to be inspired by a germanic world maybe even old british and it has 25 lots the most we still have to this day in sims 4 because you know you gotta go then 2016 we got another stuff pack which was my favorite at the time only for it to be around the boho team movie hangout stuff which centers around at home cinema items then we got an anniversary update for the whole franchise because the franchise of sims was 16 so they decided to get 
Sims 4, an update. It received gardening services, the aspiration of grilled cheese came back in the game because it was such a big element, especially in Sims 2. The kleptomaniac trait was back, we got two new paintings, one that summoned Sunny the Tragic Clown and a very famous NPC in the Sims franchise and a Sim painting and also we got the tech filter where you could search items based on style, pack and even more. It was a big and nice update and a nice way to commemorate 16 years of Sims. Then we got Romantic Garden stuff pack, which was a pack related to Romantic Garden content. Alongside the addition of the Tragic Clown as an NPC, not just a painting, and one of the best things to ever happen to Sims 4 and Sims in general, gender customization, aka you could make Sims as MB or trans as you could want. This was a big W for the gays. Then Dine Out, one of the most controversial packs at that time came. Because it was a game pack around restaurants and dining out and whatever, but it was so packed that for years nobody could really play it properly up until last year or actually this year. And this was happening 8 years ago. It's a shame because the concept was and still is an interesting one. Then we got kids room stuff pack which is basically a stuff pack that centers around kids stuff. Then the nanny update which brings back the nannies into the game. And we got another stuff pack, backyard stuff, which is basically stuff for backyard fun. In its third year, we got some of the most base things this game ever got to have. And those are lot traits, which acted like traits on Sim, but they were for lots and could change how the lot you were acted. For example, sunny lots were more sunny and Sims were happier. This was an update which led to City Living, a pack which brought apartments into the Sims 4 world. And we got our first city world, San Maishuno, and it brought back festivals and they also brought neighborhoods in december of the same year we got another addition to the holiday celebration pack with more festive items and the iconic elsa dress like slake in the january of 2017 we got vintage glamour which brought back butlers and vanities in the same month a thing which has been requested for <laughs> no more requests since the start of the game Toddlers were put back in the game and they actually acted like toddlers. You know the age span from 1 to 4 years old? If in the other games they seemed uh, that uh, age span from 1 to maybe 2 years old, here they are actually small human beings, to everyone's surprise. And they are the best toddlers we've got in all of the Sims games. Still in January, we also got another game pack, Vampire's Game Pack, which brought us our first occults into the game. Actually, second, I'm still forgetting about aliens which came with Get Together. I'm sorry. The game pack Vampires brought us vampires, which came with Vladislaus, which is the dead DM of the vampires, and with the smart world of Forgotten Hollows, which is only six slot, but you know, it's not for. Bowling Night is also released in the spring of 2017 and one of the best game packs to ever exist for Sims 4 and our first glimpse of generation Sims 4 is released to the world. Parenthood. It brings out a responsibility matter. Now parents can educate their children more and families have a more broad dynamic. In that summer we got two new stuff packs, fitness stuff and toddler stuff, which was like kids room but for toddlers, which also brought the infamous ball pit. No, not the dash can beat ball, but in this one they basically put a big a PNG of a ball pit and called it a day. They had to update it and now it actually looks like an actual ball pit it, like it has depth in its fourth year of existence sims 4 got more base game updates like content like a bed and some building stuff and another celebration update but this time it was not for christmas but for diwali diwali i'm so sorry if i pronounce it wrong i'm sure i pronounced it wrong which was one of the first inclusions updates for sims 4 and then pets game oh i, I mean cats and dogs which its trailer featured one of the most adorable songs ever from danny i love you like that which i remember back then she just released it and i was like shocked 
because nobody was talking about how cool this song is. Anyway, cats and dogs brought us pets or just cats and dogs and we could do more with them than it seems free now we could actually customize them because the color wheel is back but um only for pets not for sims 2 i don't know how hard it is to put the color wheel in the game but again i'm not a developer i tried to develop my own stardew valley mod and i got bored at some point so yeah i do not have any sayings in this anyway cats and dogs brought us bridlington bay a london or more Britain inspired world where cats and dogs roam it. And we also got our first gay official married couple and a vet clinic, which was a new lot type. Even to this day, Bridlington Bay is one of the most used world because it just slaps. Then Sims 4, it's released on consoles for the first time. And then we got another holiday celebration update for Christmas this time, of course. In 2018, we got another stuff pack, which was actually a public vote. People voted for this pack, which won and was Laundry Day. It's still one of the most base packs. It's a bit bag right now, but I still like it. Then we got Jungle Adventure, which was another vacation world where you just discover jungles. And it's a very throwback of World Adventures, the first expansion pack of Sims 3. There was a skeleton which appeared in the trailer and everyone thought Bone Hilda came back, but she won't come back for more years, unfortunately. But the pack was and still is pretty. Not a lot of people play it, but those that play it are chill about it. Selva Dorada is the name of the world and... As I said, as the name says, it's a jungle. Then we got the first controversial of The Sims 4, even if Sims 4 is a controversial in itself. Yes, I say that because my first pet stuff appears and it's a DLC for a DLC, basically. So, <laughs> basically, this pack brings rodents and what so not, which it's cute in its own way, but... <sighs> If it didn't require cats and dogs to have it, or at least for the part where you needed the clothes for pets, which is valid, but again, it's a shitty move, and for years until Babu came was the most overheated pack. Now, people just accepted their fate. In June of the same year, we got a gardening overhaul alongside glass windowing because they were preparing us for seasons! That's right! If we got pets, it's normal to get seasons as well. Sims 4 Seasons is one of the best packs for this game because it has a lot more variety than it did in the other Sims games. Now we have a calendar where you can make your own custom holidays, it says your next event and so much more. And you also have the four new seasons obviously alongside clothes and activities. No war for this like in Sims 3 but honestly the gameplay and what it brings is immaculate. Still in that summer we got the gallery update where you could upload stuff from houses to lots to rooms and even families. It was and still is like a social media but for sims. And then we also got the content base update where it featured Caribbean clothing and wallpaper I believe? I think so. Then we got less and less content for the next years because the next news we got from Sims 4 is in November when we got terrain update because we didn't have terrain up to that point and a new expansion pack Get Famous which brought us freelancing if I remember correctly and the active career of acting. We didn't get new career since Get to Work which was the first expansion pack for Sims 4 back in 2015 so it says a lot and i mean open careers we got more careers since then but open careers acting was the first since get to work this pack brings Sol del Valley, which is one of the smaller worlds, is supposed to be a ripoff of Los Angeles, but it's just small and people were mad it didn't bring beaches because Del Sol Valley is inspired by LA, which has beaches and ocean and sea. Overall, it's kind of a pack a lot of people just miss on because it's pretty forgettable, but if you have a gameplay on actors and influencing, this pack is a must. It also brings a new type of fame. Yes, they brought back fame from Sims 3 and this time it has perks and you could be more famous and less famous and in relationship with parenthood you could be a bad celebrity or not. Then we got more holiday celebration packs alongside lunar year content for this time for the whole family and it was the first time the lunar year was mentioned and got content in Sims forever and I believe in Sims 
franchise overall. Alongside the new year of 2019, we also got Stranger View Game Pack, which was the first and probably last pack that also got a story. It's kinda loosely based on Stranger Things, where there is this secret lab and they be doing experimenting, and everyone in that town at some point gets infected and they act like zombies and it's your job to defeat this infection. It's fun, but it becomes very repetitive. Okay, I was wrong. We got the freelancer in an update in 2019, so my bad. And we also got LGBTQIA plus content in the base game, and it's so funny because at the same time, Taylor released You Need to Calm Down, which was another single from her album Lover, and that song deals with haters, and the second verse it's directly towards homophobes, and so this update was just so iconic, you had to be there kind of vibe, because people also requested price type from The Sims for a long time, you know? Cause she ain't never made anybody less gay, so uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, you need to calm down. You're being too loud. <laughs> In the June of the same year, Island Living is released and we got our bitches finally and the oceans. And mermaids! Island Living was the island paradise of The Sims 4 and this expansion pack takes us on a Hawaii inspired world. Sulani and all of its inhabitants. We also get active volcanoes and you could die because of them. Now you could swim in oceans. We also got our first trans character with the addition of Sulani and so much more. Honestly, into my opinion i mean it's still one of the most underrated packs uh sims for god alongside um getting together in july the sims 4 gets a rebrand and it becomes how we know it today i don't know why they did this even to this day i love how every expansion pack had its own color because they had for example get the famous was like a maroon pink um uh, cats and dogs was red island living was yellow but now the expansion packs are cyan for as I said, expansion packs, game packs, uh, game packs are dark blue and stuff packs are green. In the same summer, we also got introduced to cast stories where you basically create a scene based on a quiz and photography improvements are dates because we get Moschino stuff pack, which was a collab between Moschino and Sims. People hated that first, but now it's one of the solid stuff packs in The Sims 4. On the sixth tier of Sims, we got an update relating to stairs. Now you could make stairs in L shape because before you couldn't. And everyone cheered! We also got my favorite occult pack, Realm of Magic, which brought sorceresses and sorceress. And you could just visit the New World Glimmer Book, which has two sides because there is this normal Glimmer Book where you live and the magic glimmer brook where you can only enter if you have a magical stone, if you are a sorcerer, or if you get to the portal, the portal in the world. Honestly, it also has some lore regarding this world. Sorcerers all could be trained by free sages, they could have duels, cast spells, and basically be badasses. In my opinion, it's amazing and I don't know why people kind of hate it because Maybe because of the world, because it only has 5 lots, but I actually do vibe with it. And it's going to be probably my favorite until fairies. So yeah, I don't know. Sims 4 also received a multi-column update, because a bit later we got Discovery University, which people have begged Sims to release for years at this point, and they got it. And they were a bit, bit disappointed, but in my opinion, the system is better than Sims 3, but a bit too complicated for my brain. And I'm degreeing right now in Shakespearean literature and analyzes, like, make it more sense, Sims! Anyway, this brings the concept of rivaling universities and mascots. And now you could make servos and add them to your family like in Sims 4 and 3. You can be in a secret society, you know, the usual. Oh, and now you can also swim in lakes because before you couldn't. So there's that. In 2020, the new decade, consoles got a new update where they added gallery as well. Because they didn't have it. Yes, they released it for consoles only to let them in the dark for so long. Then we got one of the best stuff packs for Sims 4, Tiny Living, which brought the concept of tiny living, literally. You could make small houses, apartment, basically everything small. And they brought back Murphy beds and that. So everyone cheered. And now the big update for Sims' 20th anniversary. So, in February, the franchise of Sims got to be 20 years old. 
amazing two decades and everyone was thinking if sims would get something similar like we got in 2016 like something to be remembered by some people thought they will bring the vibrating bed back nope they added a jacuzzi and an ugly one at that too everyone was livid and criticized them for that saying that all the sims franchise meant nothing basically also this was for base games so people that bought the jacuzzi pack only for the jacuzzi got a big f you not nice not nice sims but uh, then we got other updates which kind of reformed this big update we got the infamous burn makeup or the mac collab with sims we also got bills update Woo! adult thing is nice and then we got firefighters back and everyone cheered then we got Eco Lifestyles, which from the trailers they showed at first, people thought we might get a farming expansion and everyone hated Eco at first because of that, because all of us wanted farming, me included, and we didn't get farming. But Eco Lifestyle brought us Evergreen Harbor and Neighborhood Action Plan, where basically you vote stuff for a neighborhood, like actions. For example, 12 hours without water. I don't know who wants that, but it's there. And we also got lifestyles and sentiments imp implemented. Wait, not sentiments were added a bit later. We got lifestyles. And a matter that meters how eco your neighborhood is or how industrial. If it's industrial, it'll be always trash and the rain will be acid. If it's eco and lively and green, you will have a constant aurora borealis in your neighborhoods, to which that I say, take my money. If I can see Aurora Borealis in real life, at least to see it in Sims. You know what I'm saying. Then we got a reality TV show from Sims. Sparked where a bunch of known Sims YouTubers such as Plumbella, Stefo Sims, English Simmer, and I believe even Lil Simsy participated. It was fun while it lasted. There were even challenges at some point on the gallery where people from home could make their own challenges. It was fun, really. Then we got our first voted stuff back. Nifty Knitting, which brought us signs that we might get generations. I don't know when, but it did. At first it was hated and compared to laundry, but in the end it's got its time to shine. With it we got rocking chairs, yarn which cat could play with, and it was just so adorable. And we also got a sweater course, which where you made a sweater so atrocious that if you wear, to wear it, you'll be too forever. Yeah, good times, just good times. In the September of the uh, seventh year of Sims 4 ruling out, we got some of the worst pack to ever exist to Sims 4. <clears throat> Journey to Babu, I mean Batu. It was a collab between Star Wars or Disney at this point and Sims, and it brought elements from Star Wars in the Sims. It brought the world of Batu, which is a vacation world out of everything. And that's it. You can't build in that world and everyone hated this pack because we thought we still get farming. We didn't. And it's still the worst game pack ever. Everyone literally hated it. Sims fans hate it. Star Wars fans hate it. Everyone hates it. In the fall of the same year, we got more updates such as the Hispanic Heritage Month update and platforms update which was actually in the regards of one of the most I can say aesthetically pleasing packs for Sims 4. Snow Escape. Snow Escape released in the same time frame as Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Watch Dogs, and Cyberpunk 2077. And ever more too, can you freaking believe that? Because me neither. 2024 was such a mood, please take me back. I was a teen, but please take me back. It was a mood to be there. Snowy Escape brought us the first time EA decided to hire its player to make their buildings. And it was such a success. The world we got was called Mount Komorabi and it was a Japanese inspired world. It also brought us the update we could go in vacation to any world besides Grand Falls, Selva Dorada and Batu. Which to me, that's the most badass move they could bring and I applaud them for that. In the same year, we also got the famous skin tone update update where we get over 100 skin tones and besides that we could also make our own skin tones. In 2021 we get a new emotion uh, to our set of emotion, terrified because the next stuff pack we got was paranormal stuff pack which brought us our queen, the legend, Bone Hilda! 
and the fact we could make science seances science science what the fuck <laughs> seances and play with Ouija boards basically a little spirit ghost this is still one of the best and best game packs fake game packs I'm sorry what am I doing today <laughs> stuff packs in the terms of content we got we got gameplay clothes and build by modes we got a lot of stuff then stuff packs just disappear for two years, almost three actually, randomly. Nobody knows why it's to this day. <laughs> and then another rift happens in the timelines. Kids were released. So, kids are basically what store content was for Sims 2 and Sims 3, but especially Sims 3, but this time you brought them with real money. And not with Sims points, which you could buy with money, but you got the idea. These kids were basically the bridge over game base game updates and stuff packs and they would let console players experience content as well because they always said how pc players uh, got more stuff because they could also download cc so basically these kids were like cc but official what cc and our first kids were busted out which brought us vacuums and dust bunnies country kitchen and throwback feed we also got our bunk beds in 2021 because people were bragging seems to add them since 2019 since we got Discover University and they finally got released. Then we had another kit, Country Yard Oasis, which is a build by kit. Then we got more punk pants, but this time some improvements and more hair colors. Everyone cheered. And alongside this update, we also got a new game pack, Dream Hound Decorator, which brought us another one of the spot on jobs, an interior designer uh, job, which has the perfect build and buy. We got modulars. The cast is amazing, the gameplay is a bit rocky and for that people thought it should be a stuff pack instead of a game pack. But honestly, I'm fine with it being a game pack too, you know. Then we got our first festival, Sim Sessions, which was like a small Coachella and in that time frame we got Bebe Rexa, Glass Animals, and Joy Oladokun, Oladokun, I'm sorry if I mispronounced the name. They would sing in Willow Creek and honestly I kinda want more because it was in the time frame I stopped playing Sims because it was also bugged and my laptop started to be less and less of a laptop and more of a relic. In that summer we got water to rain because we couldn't have pounds, Fallen Wing, one of the best expansion packs Sims 4 could ever have and every cottage core bitch's dream, mine, cottage living. We got one of the most pittoresque worlds, Hanford or Bagley. We also got Agnes Crumple Bottom back as an NPC along her cousin. We got food market, free new festivals, we got new pets! We got sheep, llamas, cows, bunnies, foxes, birds, chickens! And the best part, you could dress them up. This is really an update for the Folklorian girls and I'm still eating this. Uh, expansion pack because it's just so good then we got industrial loft kit which put people on their asses for reasons that they're kind of stupid now that you look them at again it was some time ago this then we got our first and ever at this point pack refresh it was spa day and they added nails and some traits and that was basically like an update for spa day you don't have to buy spa day again if you had it what made people sad is that they wished that more refreshes were available like for island living for mermaids but they never got one but people still hope i still hope and we also got our first towny refreshes, the God family. They remade the gods because people were kind of mad. They didn't look like Sims 2 Bella and Mortimer or even Sims 1 Bella and Mortimer. And they just remade them. They look interesting and much more better than they were at the start of the game for sure. In the 8th year of Sims 4 running, we got a lot of kids running to the point people thought we will never get actual packs. And in the midst of kit, we got Fashion Street, Aichen Arrivals, Blooming Rooms, Modern Menswear, and Carnival Streetwear. And then, something called My Wedding Stories happened. If you were there, <laughs> you were there. This little pack got such a sin that it kinda ruined the whole vibe of this pack. So. As the name suggests, this pack was supposed to be a sweet pack around weddings because the wedding in Sims 4 were very bland and people didn't even sat down. So Sims team came with this idea of a pack surrounding weddings. 
The pack said you uh, to have a lot of weddings activity, basically remaking weddings and adding Tartosa, a Mediterranean inspired world which is very gorgeous. I'm just telling you. The pack also features two women on the front cover getting married, basically a sapphic relationship. Even the trailer was based around them. Unfortunately, A stated they won't release it in Russia because they have an anti-LGBTQI restrictions. And this was very weird considering everything that was and is LGBTQ in Russia is targeted at 18 plus. And people were very curious as to why they could just change the cover so this issue doesn't happen. Well, EA in the end said they are sorry for the inconvenience and they will release it in Russia after all. And then the most interesting butterfly effect comes in the happens. The war between Ukraine and Russia happens literally two days after this pack is released. Also in Russia, obviously. And this pack is also broken more than Dino was ever, by the way. People can cut cakes with topper on top, you can go to the aisle somehow, you have to microtransaction everything. The maid of honor and ring bearers don't ever come priested, just don't exist anymore. It was very messy and they repaired it, sure, but the damage was already done. There are patches by Simmers Online to make this pack playable because besides the bugs, my wedding story is actually an enjoyable pack. It just needs and needed actually more time for testing, honestly. Then I forgot to say that, but in the seventh year, in 2021, they released the birthday update they did for The Sims' uh, 21st birthday, and they collabed with 21 different custom content creators, and every creator made a piece of custom content. And they are just such a good quality, and I would just love for them to do this more often because I just love the public response when they collab with Simmers like EA, Maxis, please. Just do this please more often there were even more kids because at this point sims wanted to bring out the most they also started rolling quarter roadmaps and this was the first even if technically they had the roadmaps for years but nonetheless these roadmaps we had my wedding stories and decor to the max in the next roadmap we had you guessed it more kids and a game pack moonlight chic little campers which was kind of a gameplay kit since past that bust the dust and people loved it and they also added another base game update small telescopes because we just had big ass ones before that and you also got one of the coolest features ever lunar cycles which came in the base game and it was an update to prepare the game for its next game pack werewolves which from a lot of point of views is one of the best occults from sims 4 Again, I beg to differ, but I agree some items are school as heck. We also got the New World Moonwood Mill with 9 lots and the integration of Alpha, Beta and Omega in the Sims universe, uh, I mean packs. We got packs of wolves in the Sims 4. <laughs> there are two packs, even if you can make your own. There are two premates and you can get into also fight your way to be the alpha of the group. The werewolves are very tight with the sorceresses, the vampires, being enemies with vampires even, and I guess that's why people like it more because it has a bit more lore. I don't know. Werewolves is not really my gameplay, I'm sorry, I was never a Twilight girl in the first place. Anyway, the next roadmap takes us to So High School by Taylor Swift because we got a new expansion pack called High School Years which focuses around high school life. We got sneaking back in the game, Social Bunny which is like Instagram or Twitter, and it's also very interesting because in, uh, when Sims mentioned um, Social Bunny, people thought that the Social Bunny, the NPC we have in Sims 2, comes back and is going to be creepy again. No, it's just, it's just a social media app. <laughs> which is like Instagram or Twitter. Trendy, which is an app where you can sell items and make looks, like Vinted, I guess. We got Active High School, where you follow your Sims to the high school, like in Sims 3 University style. We got Prom, and my favorite addition, Bubble Tea, or just Boba. That's it. That's the tweet. The pack is amazing if you ask me, just a little bland because you can only have two courses from 8 or 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. But besides that, I actually like this pack. It also comes with Copperdale, which is a minor town. The next update was a Curveball update. Basically, people have been begging Sims to add Curveballs to the game. And they just did that for a patch for high school years. And then people have forgotten about this feature. 
The next uh, kit we got uh, were first fits kit and dessert looks kit, which was for a while free to buy. Then another roadmap, other kits of course, we got clutter kit, which is at its name suggests and one of my personal favorite kits, pastel pop kit, which was made in collaboration with Blambella. She just know what she's doing for the community and I love her so much. This happens, a thing happens and it's an interesting thing happens that year. We got something called Sim Summit, which is a pre-made live, uh, let me explain. They basically filmed this event where they release a roadmap of what is going to happen to Sims in the following year. And we got a lot of theses, from custom content to early designs and what it is to happen to Sims 4. And we also got our first glimpse at the littlest live stage Sims ever did. Infants! After people told Sims for over 8 to 9 years uh, where babies were tied to the creeps and they want them out of the creeps, now they are getting out. Kinda. Because they weren't really. They actually remained there but they became newborns from just babies and when they age up they evolve into infants. Infants are smaller than toddlers and when you put them in comparison it's creepy because toddlers used to be small but yeah, we got infants! And something which we've been expanding for years at this point, Sims 5. If you've been attentive all of this video, you remember I said at the beginning, uh, Sim, uh, every Sim game finishes after five, four to five years. Well, not Sims 4 apparently. We got going on 10 years and we are still not even close on finishing. Yet, finally EA tells us about Sims 5, or I'm sorry, Project Renee, because they say it's... it's next gen of sims in the works and people are scared for it because they say it's multiplayer and if you remember project olympus or sims 4 was supposed to be online and we know that how that went i think i've seen this film before and i didn't like the ending anyway after the sims summit the next year we got a few more kits and a new expansion pack which put our dreams and hopes back into place because we finally got generation sports which we've been craving since the early days of Sims 4 because Generations was one of the best packs for Sims 3. So, of course, it was only natural to want that for Sims 4 as well, no? Well, we finally got it and it was simply called Growing Together. And just like Parenthood, it introduced us to a new type of family life and dynamics. We got introduced to milestones, which kind of were like a memory system, technically. Um, we didn't have and still kinda don't really have a memory system introduced. Even though we actually do have it, it's just so hidden almost everyone kinda forgets it even exists. So having one like in Sims 2, it's so much better honestly. We also got loose teeth which started a bag which even nowadays kinda exists. So please be careful if you look it on the internet, just be really careful. Um, it, it fucks your Sims and you have to refresh saves we also got three houses which you can assemble your safe and decorate however you want a new lot type a new work of san sequoia which looks a lot like san francisco suburbia family dynamics which is uh until now a new system for chemistry system we also got likes dislikes we also got more than three traits kind of like the sims can discover three more traits as you play more and more and this is only the surface of growing together. It's one of the best packs of Sims 4 and alongside cottage living and seasons and even cats and dogs, I think it's a must to have, especially if your gameplay is fit on legacies and family. Then we got even more kids because the sentiments and bathroom clutter, which is basically an underwear and bathroom clutter kit, greenhouse heaven, basement treasure and grunge revival. Then we got a surprise expansion pack. And uh, behind the scenes, which was a mini same summer summit where they shared what's next to come for Sims 4. And they showed horses. <laughs> we finally were getting horses in Sims. Which was very weird reaction because people were mad they were lacking horses behind another pack when they could just put them in cottage living or cats and dogs and make it pets. But whatever, we already know Sims at this point. And then something magical happened. They brought stuff back, back, and everyone cheered. 
So basically, everyone thought stuff packs died because they introduced kids. Because if you have seen since 2021, we had so many kids that no stuff packs were inside. In reality, apparently, they put a new studio in Europe where from now on they work as the studio for the stuff packs or something. All at the time they worked around that, like, yeah. <laughs> Whatever, we got stuff packs back. And just like that, we got the Home Chef Hustle, which is a stuff pack around baking and cooking. Basically, they rebranding cooking as we have it known in Sims 4. Now we also have cupcakes that can be made in an oven because a very important <laughs> detail I forgot to mention, just like that, is that Sims 4 Bake Scheme came with a gigantic cupcake machine and that was the only way you could do cupcakes in the game. But now you could just bake them and everyone is happy. They also added a mixer where you can make different types of ingredients that help in making other foods, a waffle machine and a pizza stove. And this pack also lets you sell your own food so if you wanna do a food fair you totally can. We are going on the 10th year of Sims 4, a decade of Sims 4 as of right now. Um, it should have finished 5 years ago if we, we were taking that pattern but again Sims 4 is a bit more special and she needs 9 to 10 years and we're not even done yet. They have to announce some expansion pack as of right now. It's wild right. In the December of that year, okay, last year we got 4 rent, another expansion pack which centered around Tomorang, a South Asian world which has a lot of volcanic elements and my heart is actually full for you. Thank you for rent. It also brought us renting apartment, breaking in other houses and a lot more things. The build and buy alongside cast was pretty interesting. The food they brought was also pretty much South Asian inspired. For rent was a nice idea and a nice addition to the apartments we already had in city living. Also with another base game update where they also added so you can delete windows and doors in pre-made apartments. So now you can have a matching style apartment. Everyone cheered. Well, the complaint started because at first the world was too small and it still is saying at 9 lots versus 13 for San Sequoia or 14. I can't remember, maybe Cottage Living has 14, I don't know. And also, 4 rent was very broken if you had more than 6 rents. So, the rule is if you have apartments or rentals, as they are actually called in the game, uh, and uh, you have a unit uh, under 6 units, you are okay. But if you have a unit uh, over six um, units, a rental over six units in every world, there is a cheat for that because they actually locked this. Because I think they actually knew this could be broken and break the game. Well, this cheat was made specifically so you can have up to 100 friends. Um, but they said from the start. They unrecommend this actually because it might break the game and it did broke it. And they had to issue an issue that they will resolve that. Anyway, after that uh, stuff pack and actually expansion pack, not stuff pack, I'm sorry. They released even more kits such as Modern Looks, Full Size Splash, Castle Estate and God Galore, which were two kits that were voted by the community and won, like they did with Laundry and Nifty. And God Galore from the start had these complaints that it wasn't good enough and they already made Grunge Revival, maybe their month went on that, money went on that. This type of stuff, you know what I mean? Anyway, it also had a lot of issues regarding a hoodie because their eyes would become bigger after putting it on and they wouldn't just come back if you just removed it but recti they rectified it and then we got another stuff pack for the rock girlies the crystal creations which basically updates the already existing crystals and helping them to be put and crafted actually into beautiful jewelry the pack revolves around the geomology skill a new skill that this pack adds and where you collect gems and you craft them into beautiful jewelry where you can also activate them at moon where there are thousands of combinations for this jewelry because you can use every jewel and every type of combination possible on every type of jewelry like earrings, necklaces and some of the jewelry is named after Delicate by Taylor Swift from Reputation. We have some Swifties in the Sims 4 department. Hi! 
And one of my favorite things ever to happen now, if you craft a ring and you propose with that, that person will wear the ring on their finger like they used to do it in The Sims 2 all days. I love this so freaking much. You have no idea how much I wanted a thing like this to happen and it happens. Also, the crystal tree from Sims 3 store makes an appearance where you can take crystals from it, but you have to wait 7 days or 14 days if I remember correctly for it to grow to a fully crystal tree and you can just take care of it like a normal tree and as of right now we also got other two kits urban homage and party essentials which is a cast and build and buy kit and as of right now that's pretty much the timeline of sims 4 from our idea scrapped rebranded failed to a kind of redemption in these years sims 4 also became kind of a staple in everyone's lives as of right now sims 4 has the most pack a sims game ever had for reference sims 1 only had expansions 6 at number sims 2 had 18 packs without store content sims 3 had 19 without store content and sims 4 has 76 packs with kids. Without them, there are just 47, which is still a lot, and it still continues to grow. Throughout its life, Sims 4 had two towny refreshes, one for the gods, as I said, and one for the Calientes, another family which was very present in the Sims 2 lore, and they are said to be the abductors of Bella gods. Sims 4 collabed with a few brands and simmers throughout its lifetime and made different changes to the game. I realized that I forgot to say but at some point in 2021, maybe even 2022, they added pronouns which they tested for a while because Sims uh, CMRs actually wanted to feel included. Well, this was kind of a collaboration if you can call it like that, but official collabs, they collabed with Moschino, Disney, with Star Wars, the infamous Mac collab, they collabed with Baby Ariel, now she's in Sim 4 and she cannot die, she's an immortal being like Grimm, they also collabed with Trixie Mattel to review horse French with nice move if you ask me. Plumpera for the pastel pop kit. Ice Moon Moon also made a kit if I remember correctly. I will add at editing if I'm right or wrong. And of course the 21st Sims anniversary with those CC creators. They also collab with a lot of POC people throughout the years to give us base game updates for POC people like afro texture hair, different colors, bonnets, clothing. Nowadays they let EA creators make their houses in packs so yeah. A lot of collabing and I love it. Maybe Sims had a lot of controversies surrounding it because it was supposed to be like SimCity but as of right now it holds a testament that if people love it and show support for it, it will continue to grow. If it is to drive a parallel, No Man's Sky and Cyberpunk 2077 are two of the best games to compare Sims 4 longevity with. The difference is that these two games are full games and they had the 2 to 4 years old longevity of updates while Sims is a game that counts on continuous content for it to survive. I know, if, if you get my idea. Of course, there shouldn't be a Sims 4 timeline if I wouldn't mention the mothers and content creators of Sims 4. So basically, if you don't know, CC and mods are different things from the official maxes. They are made by people in Blender and Sims 4 Studios and they are made to, for free. You can download them from sites such as Patreon, where most of them put them for free, Tumblr, Sim File Share or CFC, uh, the Sims resources, uh, Sims Dome, Sims 4 Finds and even more. But there are just some mods that cast Sims 4 as popular this right now because they exist. Wicked Whims, it was also used to be called Wicked Woohoo but after a defamation case in 2016 they had to change it. This is basically 18 plus very much detailed activities mod. UI cheese is also mod to help cheat the ways way easier and change values faster and to your liking even the devs use it. Believe me, I saw it. Slice of Life is a mod that kinda gives you an addition of more interactions for Sims 4, it's like they were made to be in the game. Realistic Childbirth is one of the best mods to ever exist to me because it shows the pregnancy as it is, realistical and not you to go into machine and hope there's a baby. It's also interesting because Sims 4 introduced us to pregnancy testing which didn't exist before in other games. There was a melody and that's how you knew your Sims ended up pregnant or not. Passionate Romance adds more romance interaction. Custom baking uh, adds food for you to bake and if you have different types of custom foods and they are compatible with this, especially cakes and sweets, you can also have different types of food. Life drama adds more drama to your game playing, like who doesn't love some drama? Morton mode adds funerals and eliminates the Grim Reaper and instead a guy comes and confirms the person dead and from there on you can make a funeral for them. 
Of course, there are even more mods that are just amazing and it would take me ages literally to say all of them because there are just so many because after all, all of them deserve the highlight and that all deserve the recognition. If you want to know more, there are thousands of videos on this theme on YouTube. So if you want mods specifically for LGBTQIA plus content, Taylor Swift, I don't know, Legacy, there are videos on those modes specifically believe me and that was the whole video guys the whole history of since 4 from its pre-start its rocky coming of age and well today i guess it became more popular and accepted as of recently because sims 4 became free after the sims summit and of course a lot of people just took it and are now expecting the joys of sims i guess you can say which i'm happy despite everyone saying sims 4 is boring it still has a long way in i'm happy how it is today and the packs they released and what's so not and i wish we had cars maybe in the new future maybe we'll get it alongside fairies maybe a girl can only dream. If I have made it something, please correct me down in the comments. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Also, I realized now at the end of the video that there are plant sims in The Sims 4. You know that very weird life stage we got since Sims 1? And it goes throughout all of the games? Yeah. There was a challenge back in the day with plant sims and uh, unfortunately they are the most useless occults in The Sims 4 because they only resist 5 days. I believe there are modes to make it uh, permanent but besides that you have to do this challenge every time if you want your sim to basically be a plant sim forever. But yeah. Thanks for watching guys! If you want to see my activity outside of YouTube, you can follow me on my social medias, the links are down in the description below and subscribe with the bell to receive a notification every time I post. I'm sorry if my voice just went from good to bad, I, I got a sore throat as I was reading the script. I know I just love to talk about my passions and um, I'm sorry if my voice was worse as the video progressed but thanks for watching i was zina and i'm going to see you in the next video goodbye